In this week's Tuesday tutorial, we'll see how to easily add a beautiful polished gold texture to some text and in a way that's very easy to reuse. I'm Dave Cross and as I said, we're going to take a look at a, a simple way to add this nice polished gold look and it really is just simply using layer styles. But one of the added things we can do is, well, two things actually. One is to save it as a style so we can use it and then add a little finishing touch just to make it look that much better. So it's not absolutely necessary, but I find if you're gonna do polished gold, to me it looks better to have the background black. So I'm gonna take my white background layer, press Command or Control I to invert that layer, which of course now means you can't see my type. So I'm gonna fill it with some color. And it's important to realize it doesn't matter what the color is because we're going to use layer styles to do this. I also want some more text in here, so I'm going to take my move tool, hold down Option or Alt and the Shift key, drag down, and that's going to allow me to make another layer, just a copy of the first one. We're going to take this one and change it to something else, which of course is going to be way too big, so we're going to use our controls to make it smaller. Now, ideally, I want these to be the same width. So I'm going to quickly show my rulers, Command or Control R, and drag a guide onto each end of my text here. So then on my photography layer, I can use free transform to stretch this. I'm using the shift key to keep it proportional. There we go. And let's move it up just a little bit. Now that I've done that, I can get rid of my guides. Go to view menu, clear guides. I don't need them anymore. And let's go back to our first one. We're going to the layer styles. And the first thing we're gonna do is add a color overlay. And this is why it wasn't important what color my type started out with, because I'm gonna add the color here in the layer styles. So we're gonna pick a color and something in this sort of area. And of course, we'll be able to experiment th with this as we go, but something in this sort of range probably is good to start with. And then we're gonna to go to bevel and emboss. And this is where it's really gonna make the difference. So this is what it's probably gonna open up looking like where it doesn't have too much happening. So we want the style to be inner bevel, the technique to be chisel hard. We wanna move the size so that there's kind of a ridge right in the middle of each letter, something like that. And you can play around with the depth to give it a little more dramatic look if you want. But what's really gonna make the difference is this area down here where it says gloss contour. And it will be a matter of your taste and which one you like. I tend to go with one of these ones here. I find they tend to look the best for what I'm looking for. I like that one right there. You can also play around with the settings if you want the highlights to be a little brighter. That's probably too bright. And the same with the shadows. You can make the shadows even more dramatic or less so. That's your choice. But one of the things that I want to be able to do with this is to not have to do this every time I want gold type. So let's assume for a moment that we like the way that this looks. I'm going to change this just a hair, I think. There we go. Over here in the layer style dialog box, there is an option called new style. And I'm going to call mine gold boss. If you are using libraries, you have the option of adding it to your current library, which makes it even easier to access. I'll show you that in a second. Click OK, and then OK again. Now, it doesn't change what's already there, but now it means that anytime I want to do that same look, it's one click away, either by going to my Styles panel or to my library. So, for example, in this second layer where it says Photography, I want the same look, so I go to my Styles panel, and right there at the bottom, the very last one, there's the one I just created called Gold Emboss. Now, one thing you have to remember about this is that when you apply a style like this, it's remembering everything, including the sizing, so the depth and everything that was based on the bigger type. So the good thing about these styles is they automatically apply everything for you, but even better, I can still go in and tweak it. So in this case, I think the settings are a little too high. So let's collapse this panel, go back here to this Bevel Emboss, double click, and maybe play around with this so that this, these settings are a little bit different because it doesn't need to be quite as dramatic. Something like that. Now, as I mentioned, you have the ability now, I can take anything I want, I'll just add a white bar on a separate layer. 
I could go either back to the styles or the other option is if you have something already there, just hold down Option or Alt and drag it onto that layer and that will copy it onto there as well. And once again, if you need to, change the size accordingly. Now we could, again, just leave it just like that, but sometimes I want to add a little bit more to it. So I'm going to show you how we could take another effect, which is the lens flare filter, just to add a little more interesting kind of reflection to what we're working on here. So right at the top here, I'm going to add a new layer and fill it with black, which of course will temporarily cover everything up, but that's okay. And then I want to right click on this and choose convert to smart object because I'm going to apply a filter and I want the ability to edit the filter quite easily. So I'm going to go to Render, Lens Flare. And then here, it's just a matter of deciding the basic look that I want. I want to get some of these lines and that kind of circle effect, something like that, and click OK. Now because, of course, it's on top of everything, I want to be able to see it. So if I change the Blend Mode to Screen, it's going to take away the black, and now we're going to see this nice reflection happening everywhere. But I only want it to appear inside the graphic itself, the type and everything, not all the black. So a simple way to do that while preserving everything else, I'm going to go down here to my three layers that make up my logo, the box, this photography type, and the Jonas type, and then press Command or Control G, which is a shortcut for Add to a Group. So now everything to do with the logo is inside this group. So the first thing I could try is now that I have everything in the group, I can make this thing called a clipping group, which means I hold down Option or Alt and click between this top layer with the lens flare and my group, and now the lens flare is only visible inside the layers of the group. And you can see if I move it around how now I have this nice little movable reflection. I could also try, now that it's in that clipping group, taking it out of screen mode to maybe something like overlay, which is going to be pretty dramatic, so I might need to lower the opacity a little bit. Don't like that quite as much, but that's another option that's available. And of course, the beauty of doing all of this this way is everything is still editable, including the type. It's still a regular type layer, so I can easily edit it. And that, like a lot of the tutorials I talk about, that's one of the benefits for working non-destructively, be able to do this kind of effect in a way that you can edit every aspect of it, the gold embossed look, the type itself, and in our case, the lens flare that we applied as a smart filter. So again, great benefit to always thinking about ways to work non-destructively in Photoshop. That's it for this week. Please don't forget to subscribe, share this video with your friends who like Photoshop as much as you do, and we'll see you next week for another Photoshop tutorial. I'm Dave Cross. We'll see you next time.